Hello and welcome to the Martini Shot, home of movie reviews and movie themed cocktails. My name is Brandon and today we're going to be reviewing the 2023 horror film It Lives Inside. But before we do that, let's trap a devilishly good drink inside a jar with a spicy hot chocolate cocktail I've named the Pishash. And hey, if you enjoy movie reviews and movie themed cocktails, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to help support the channel. Pishash is a flesh-eating spirit in Dharmic religions, notably Hinduism and Buddhism. They feed on human energy and must be contained in a vessel in order to be stopped. This can really be any type of container, but in this film it's most notably a mason jar. For the Pishash cocktail, I've decided to ring in the fall weather with a Indian-influenced hot chocolate cocktail flavored with an assortment of spices and dark rum. Let's go ahead and seal away this demon of a drink. So this cocktail will actually be built in more of a kitchen setting than a bar setting. You're essentially gonna need a stove top, which is where we're gonna start. We're gonna be making a spicy milk mixture. So go ahead and grab a pot. You're first gonna be adding a cup of whole milk or whichever type of milk you choose to use, followed by four slices of fresh ginger, one to two cinnamon sticks, one teaspoon of cardamom, three whole cloves, about eight whole black peppercorns, a dash of cayenne pepper, and about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're gonna to wanna to set that mixture to medium heat and keep it on there just before it starts to boil. Once that's done, you can filter it through a fine mesh strainer or a cheesecloth if you'd like, just something to get the excess ingredients out. And then you can pour that mixture into any heat resistant container that you like. I'm gonna go ahead and use a mason jar just to stick with the film. All right, now that we have our milk mixture, now we can add our cocoa powder. You can use your brand of choice. And then for our alcohol, we're gonna be using some rum. You're gonna be doing two ounces and we'll give it a bit of a shake to combine. And then of course it's hot chocolate, so go ahead and garnish it with a few marshmallows and a roasted cinnamon stick. And there you go, now you have the Pishash. At first you may find this to taste just kind of like a normal hot chocolate, but I do think some of those spices really start to come in on the back end. The cayenne and cardamom is very apparent. It really kind of sits in the back of your throat, giving you a nice little spice that goes along with the warmth of the chocolate. And spice and chocolate is just one of those very surprising combinations that do work out pretty well together. And the rum is also an excellent addition. Those vanilla notes that naturally come from it pair terrifically with the chocolate. It's not a drink that's gonna dwell too far outside of your comfort zones. And honestly, if you wanna make it spicier, by all means, you could definitely do that. But as is, this is a nice spin on a comfort classic that will definitely get you ready for the cold months ahead. Now that we have our drink, let's get right into the review of It Lives Inside. Horror is one of those genres that has such a universal appeal because fear is something we all share across cultures, languages, and generations. While it's safe to say we all share similar fears, demons, death, gore, etc., I've always found it interesting how different cultures manifest these fears into different stories and entities. If you look throughout history of every civilization, you'll find tales of monsters and spirits that were either designed to be a metaphorical representation of a lesson or proverb, while others were meant to bridge the gap between us and the things we don't understand. There's a lot of similarities to be found, like the Boogeyman and Baba Yaga, but I always enjoy seeing the uniqueness each culture brings to these stories. Unfortunately, that uniqueness doesn't always translate into film adaptations which happens to be the case with 2023's It Lives Inside. It Lives Inside has the benefit of pulling from an underrepresented culture in American film, yet also pulls from the most underwhelming aspects of American horror. Ineffective scares, genre cliches, and a over-reliance on atmosphere with very little payoff plague this demonic tale. While some social commentary attempts to make the film more relatable, it never really comes full circle in a meaningful or interesting way. While the conventional approach could be seen as a love letter to the genre from the director's point of view, it still feels ironic that a film about not sacrificing what makes you unique to better fit in with the crowd does the exact opposite. The film follows high school student Samita, an Indian American trying her best to fit in her heavily suburban American town. Yet her attempts to become another face in the crowd gets upended when her former best friend Tamira tells her of a demonic force she found living inside a jar. The spirit eventually gets released and begins to torment Samita and everyone she gets close to. Truth be told, I think there's plenty of heart to this film. Director Bashal Duda is obviously drawing on a lot of personal and cultural experience here, having been born in India only to move to the United States later in his young life. These kinds of elements translate pretty well to this film as Samita finds herself caught between two worlds. In an effort to blend in with her peers, she tries her best to reject her parents, mostly her mother's cultural wishes and habits. She's shortening her name to Sam, shaving her arms, and being cautious of how her clothes smell when she leaves the house. 
These are little things that I know are going to resonate with a ton of first generations. And I'm glad these struggles are finding their way onto the film. The conflict of embracing your culture unfortunately gets used in a fairly uninteresting way, however, being simply used as a way to stop the film's monster without really connecting to those real-world issues. The struggles at least feel compelling enough thanks to decent performances from Megan Suri as Samita and Niru Baja as her mother Porna. While the film does seem to embrace the culture that inspired it, everything plays out rather predictably and rather lazily. The creature for most of the film is an unseen force of nature that can be anywhere at any time, capable of killing anyone at any moment, yet also decides to keep some people alive to kill later. The rules and laws the demon is tied to appear to be pretty loose, kind of just doing whatever the plot needs from it. It's super underwhelming and isn't all that scary, only really showing its true form at the end, where it admittedly looks cool, but not all that memorable. Because of such a simple creature approach, the film is unable to consistently pull off genuine scares. We get a few jump scares here and there that aren't offensively bad, yet they don't come off as terrifying in the slightest. The film is occasionally able to unnerve with a slower sense of pacing for some scenes, yet rarely do they ever lead to a satisfying payoff. The stakes hardly ever feel heavy as well, especially when the film ends with an on-screen body count of one. It doesn't help that the PG-13 rating can't even allow the film to lean on some more ballsy imagery. Films like Smile or Megan can at least salvage themselves a bit thanks to a quirky premise, but outside of its cultural connection, this is as by the book as you can get. You can see a ton of influence from other horror films here, like the element of not knowing if you're awake or asleep, like in Nightmare on Elm Street, or a seven day prolonged death like The Ring. Yet there's nothing here that really screams director's vision to me. There's some interesting shot composition from time to time, and I did enjoy a lot of the sound design, but the majority of the project feels devoid of character. It's a small film, don't get me wrong, but competency in the craft can only get you so far. It lacks the distinct vision of an Aster, Eggers, or Peel, while stumbling to effectively connect its spooky shenanigans with a teenage experience like Talk To Me did. It really is just fine, like I said, not offensively bad or insulting to its audience. It's just far too familiar in a period where horror has been getting weirder and more creative than ever before. Its atmosphere is occasionally effective and the performances and creature designs are often the highlights, but I can't help but feel more could have been done to really tie the terror into the message the film is trying to highlight. It's incredibly tame and not all that shocking, but might give you a decent enough time this Halloween season. If anything, it does make me a tad more curious in seeing what Hindi horror movies are out there, so if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave those down in the comments. For my rating, I'm giving this film two and a half chunks of raw meat out of five. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Martini Shot. If you saw It Lives Inside, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And if you like what you saw here and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me across all social media channels. Those links are down in the description below. If you enjoy movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to check out my website, martinishot.blog. Until next time, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Live deliciously, but please remember to drink responsibly. Thank you.